Although many scientists think that bird flu, or more correctly, avian influenza, may become the next pandemic flu strain, it's not there yet. It hasn't quite figured out how to be as contagious as regular flu. Pandemics occur when we're exposed to a virus that our bodies have never seen before. Therefore, we don't have immunity, so a lot more people get sick. Now, Newswatch talked with Dr. Jeffrey Taubenberger, one of DOD's and the world's leading scientists on pandemic flu. So what we do know is in the last 100 years, there have been three pandemics, the 1918 flu, the 1957 or Asian flu, and the 1968 or Hong Kong flu. And, and they were quite variable in their, in their outcome. The 1918 flu is probably the worst flu pandemic or the worst infectious disease outbreak known in recorded history. The 1957 uh, outbreak was really, in a sense, a typical influenza pandemic, pretty serious. And the 1968 Hong Kong pandemic was a very mild pandemic, actually, not much worse than seasonal flu. The Department of Defense is one of the nation's lead agencies in preparing for a possible avian flu pandemic. DOD has about a, a third of the uh, of all of the tasks assigned to national response. And within that, uh, there's about uh, I believe it's 37 tasks where DOD is actually in the lead for those. Tasks like producing information plans and question and answer websites for service members and beneficiaries. Distributing clinical practice guidelines for medical personnel on how to recognize and treat pandemic flu. Stockpiling antiviral medications and antibiotics for secondary infections. Stockpiling supplies like masks and gloves. And continuing the development of specific pandemic flu vaccines. The best of all possible worlds is that a lot of good planning would go in to how we would deal with the pandemic, but that H5 actually doesn't become a pandemic. That would be the best scenario. But I think that even if H5 doesn't become a pandemic in the next few years, we have to be aware that we're very likely to see a pandemic again in the future. And Dan, if our viewers want to know more about pandemic influenza, the best website I've found is pandemicflu.gov. I think you're seeing it there on the screen. It's got a lot of good information there, questions and answers. Uh, you can even pull up your own state, see what your local community is doing in the event that pandemic flu does break out. And there's a link to our DOD website where you can pull up a guide for service members and their families on pandemic flu. So check it out. Dan, that's the flu story. Back to you. There's no way the flu shot can give you the flu. I think what most folks experience after getting a shot is a little fever, some muscle aches. That's completely normal. That means your body is reacting to the shot and starting to build immunity. A real case of the flu is going to knock you out. So here's some Harry Shackelford knows firsthand about the flu. He came down with a bad case several years ago, and he was miserable for a week. Everything feels bad. Your head ache, your muscles ache, your whole body aches. It's just a terrible thing. His wife, Brenda, is a retired third grade teacher, and she used to get the flu from her students. They're in your face a lot, you know, talking, coughing, and that sort of thing. But this year, things are different. They both plan to get a flu shot. Every year in the U.S., up to 60 million people come down with the disease, and 36,000 die from flu or its complications. Flu usually peaks in the late winter months because people are inside and closer together and spread the disease easier. Flu shots are up to 90% effective, but you have to get one every year. That is because the strains which cause flu are constantly changing. The usual number of flu strains that are included in a vaccine are three. So you've got three different viruses that could potentially cause disease. Anyone six months or older can take the vaccine, but it's especially important for anyone in school or college those 50 or older, Deep breaths in and out. anyone with serious diseases like diabetes, asthma, and heart problems, women who are pregnant, medical personnel. For active duty service members, it's mandatory. And the reason for that is combat effectiveness. Influenza is highly contagious and mission stopping. So Michelle, you can imagine if a whole company or battalion came down with the flu, their combat effectiveness would be zero. Exactly. Now another big concern is the bird flu. Will this particular vaccine protect against that? Unfortunately not, but they're developing a vaccine for the bird flu. We're going to talk about that and a lot of other things on the next edition of Newswatch. So we'll look forward to that. Thank you very much for joining us, sir.